Hey guys, welcome back to Keys of the Cosmos. This is video number 15 in my series, Astrophotography Target Tips. And in this video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite targets, and that is the California Nebula. A big, bright, beautiful, easy to locate, late summer, early fall target. So in this video, we'll talk about, of course, where to locate it, framing it up, uh, integration time, and some tips on how to process it as well. Now this is a target that I've actually shot technically twice before. Depends how you want to look at it. So uh, fairly early on, a few months into this hobby last year, I saw some beautiful, I saw some images of the California Nebula and I definitely wanted to image it. So I went out and I sunk two and a half hours into it. And here's the image here. So this was shot with my Sharpstar 76 millimeter. I believe I used the Optolong L Extreme and of course on my Star Adventurer with my modified uh, Canon 600 DSLR. And at the time I was blown away. I loved it. I thought it was my best image by far. It probably was at that point. And man, was I happy with it. But <laughs> you know how it is. And a little bit of time goes on, another three weeks, four weeks, something like that. And I thought, you know what, maybe I should try adding to it. Uh, most of my images that, at that point were two to three hours. So I said, I loved it so much, this target. Let me try sinking some more time into it. So I sunk another two hours into it. And by that time as well, my processing skills had improved. And so with four and a half hours, this was the result. Same exact equipment, but... <laughs> If I may say so myself, what a difference. Uh, the first image really is not very good looking back on it. It's not very well processed in particular, but what a difference two hours made as well as uh, my processing skills improving. And I'm still very, actually very happy with that image. And I thought to myself, um, you know, with a lot of these videos, I'm showing older pictures and there's quite a drastic difference. But I thought with this one, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that much better, particularly in my light polluted skies and all that. So I thought, well, we're gonna sink some more time into it for sure. This time around, I'll be using a, a dedicated astrotography camera. Let's see what we can do. And I wanna go, I wanted to go for a slightly different look. So we'll talk about that. But this, that was my image there from the very last time that I added time to it and processed it. Still one of my favorite images uh, to this day. But as I mentioned, the California Nebula is a, is a great target, particularly for beginners. As I mentioned, it's big, it's bright, it's very easy to locate, and you can shoot it with just about anything. Um, so let's talk about where to locate it, first of all. As I mentioned, it's easy to find. It's in the constellation Perseus. Now, the nice thing about Perseus is not only is it visible, even in light polluted skies like mine here in Toronto, but it's basically right beside the Pleiades uh, star cluster. So the Pleiades, I think just about everyone has... Unless you're really new into astronomy, you've uh, seen it with your bare eyes. You don't even need, you know, binoculars to see it. It's quite big and it's fairly bright. And um, if you're looking in that eastern sky, you should be able to see it no problem. And the nice thing about California is it's basically right beside uh, the Pleiades. And what's also nice about it is the star that's right beside it, so it, in other words, it'll definitely be in your image unless you're doing a really cropped version of it. Um, that star beside it is one that you can see as well with your naked eye. So let's explain how to find it. So as I mentioned, what I do is when I go to look for the California Nebula, I look for um, the Pleiades star cluster. Then just to the left of that, there's two stars sort of one on top of the other. The brighter, The bottom one is a bit brighter, so we're focusing on that one. And then, so once we've seen those two stars to the, just to the left in the eastern sky of the Pleiades, go again to the left and slightly up, and there's going to be another star about the same brightness, okay? So now we're, we're picturing a line sort of going up like this. Hopefully these images here help from Stellarium. Now, we're, now that we have those two stars um, that we can see clearly, if you look in between them, basically dead center and just a little bit lower than them, there's a a star, I'd say it's maybe half as bright. Now you may need let you may need to let your eyes adjust. Okay, if you've been looking at a screen, it might be hard to see. Give it a few seconds, let your eyes adjust, and you should be able to see that star. That's the star Menkib. I'm sure I'm butchering that uh, pronunciation. That's the star that's actually in the image 
of the California Nebula. It reminds me a lot of IC1396, the elephant trunk with that star that's you can actually see with your naked eye, and that's the star that is up here. There we go, and is in the actual image. It makes it so much easier when you can see a star that's in the actual image itself. So once you find that star, point your laser pointer, whatever you're using your tel to help get your telescope right on it. And assuming that your tel telescope is pointing where that laser pointer is, you should be able to see the California Nebula pop up on a test shot. So let's talk about that integration uh, and framing it up, first of all. So once you do a test shot, um, assuming you're using a fairly wide field telescope, you should be able, you should have a, quite a bit of room. Now, as I mentioned, my first time around shooting it, I shot it with the Sharpstar 76 millimeter and my Canon uh, DSLR with an APS-C sensor. So I've talked about in other videos, that's a bigger sensor than the ones in my dedicated astrophotography camera. So this time around, knowing that, I knew that switching to that one of those cameras with a smaller sensor and using that same sharp star, it would be pretty tight. And I knew I wanted to do at least two nights of imaging. So what I actually did was I went down to my RedCat 51 and, and using my uh, ASI 533 MC Pro camera. And I found that to be just about the perfect combination. Uh, it gives you a little bit of room, okay? But uh, not so much that you're gonna be cropping a ton, but also like I mentioned, a little bit of room. And the thing about the California Nebula is you couldn't see it in my in my image, my second image that I showed, but there actually is sort of a tail of gas. Some guys like to include that in it. They like to shoot a little bit more wide field and include that entire tail of gas. I didn't include the entire thing, but with the uh, Red Cat 51 and that ASI 533, it gave me uh, a little bit more room to shoot sort of the entire California Nebula. So that's what I used. And this time around, I went up from four and a half hours the second time shooting it to eight hours of integration time shot over two full nights. So uh, actually, correction, it was three nights. The first night was sort of a write-off, but uh, I sunk two more nights in and got a total of eight hours. So that was quite a bit more, almost double. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what the difference was in getting that integration time. But as far as framing it up, it's fairly easy if you're giving yourself room. Uh, you can use the star Menkeb there, that star that's right beside it, as a reference. That's what I did. I took a screenshot the first night, sort of centering the California Nebula from corner to corner. And uh, uh, to help understand that, here's a single exposure, a 60 second exposure. Again, this is using my Red Cat and the ASI 533 with the L Extreme light pollution filter. So you can see it's it's a little bit tight, but definitely enough room to play with it. And I sort of just used that star Menkeb. So I took a screenshot and the next night when I went to go out and center it up again, I used that star uh, referencing that, that screenshot and sort of tried to position it in the same place. And it worked out well. I didn't have any crazy stacking lines. I was able to get it pretty close. So let's talk about integration time. Now, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm quite happy with that second image, four and a half hours. I don't think you really need to sync much more than that. Assuming you have at least a, a modified DSLR and a decent um, light pollution filter, if you're shooting in light pollution, you should be able to shoot anywhere from three to five hours and get a pretty nice image. I don't think this is one of those targets you need to sync, you know, 10 plus hours. I've seen some beautiful, don't get me wrong, I've seen beautiful ones of it. And you do get more surrounding gas, you do get more details and structure, but if we're being realistic and you don't have the greatest weather, like we haven't had this summer, three to five hours will get you a decent image. One that I think you'll be very happy with. So yeah, integration time, that's what I recommend. Obviously, if you can do more, it never hurts, but uh, three to five hours will get you a nice image. So here's my stacked image. Nothing to see, pretty typical. Um, we need to do a lot of processing here. So let's talk about processing. Now I'm not going to get into all the steps of processing. I talk about it in just about all my videos. It starts with levels adjust, uh, uh, stretches and levels adjustment, right? Those are the two key things. You got to stretch it first and you'll see the nebula start to pop up. The levels adjustment sort of corrects and gets makes it dark again. But even still, you're gonna get some wonky colors. We talk about this in every video. That's where I use in the levels adjustment box, that sampler on the right side, select the middle one, and then click on the background of the image. And that'll sort of color correct and get you a nice dark background again. And then from there, we do some more stretching. Now, a couple things 
that I do want to mention. There is one very bright section of the California Nebula that you need to be careful because it'll blow out quite quickly before you can really get stretch and get at all of the uh, gas that's there to, to pop out. So what I did was early on, I'd say after about four or five stretches, I lassoed off here in the image I'll try to show you, I lassoed off that section and I selected inverse. So select, I think it is at the top of the uh, screen in your uh, processing software, if you're using Photoshop, and then select inverse. So once you've lassoed that off and select inverse, now we're protecting that part of the image and working on everything else. And then I did my final few stretches, similar to how I did the center here of the Eagle Nebula, trying to protect it, how I do Andromeda, how I do Orion. Anytime you have a really bright section of the target, you need to protect it and then do your final stretches so that it doesn't blow out and the rest, you can still get the rest to pop out. So that's one key tip. Now after that, um, you should be able to see the California number fairly clear. I remember the first time, even after just two and a half hours, I was shocked with just a couple stretches and levels adjustments. And then I went to auto color, okay, and selected that and boom, it popped out and I was blown away. I had what I could consider almost a finished image, you know, for the time being back then when I was happy with that. So if you are really just starting out and you know, you're just learning processing, you can just do some levels adjustments, curves, uh, stretches, hit auto color, auto contrast, and just let Photoshop do it for you. And then you make some minor, you know, contrast and stuff adjustments to the entire image, but you'll have an image you can be proud of. But if we want to go a step further, what did I do? Two key things. Okay. So first of all, I, the, the thing about the California Nebula is, and this is where it leaves room for you to sort of play with it, depending on how you like to do, you know, what you want your image to look like. There's a lot of sort of surrounding gas sort of emitting out of the main uh, structure of the California Nebula. So it's up to you whether you, how much of that gas you want to be visible. You know, do you want it to be super soft and sort of uh, pluming gas, or do you want it just to be like, it's just sort of barely coming out off the main structure. I sort of want to go somewhere in the middle with this. I've seen some images where, you know, the, the gas coming off of it is as big as the, the structure itself of the California area. That's not really my taste. So I kind of tried to soften that gas, but here's how I did that. For, after I did my main stretch and levels adjustments, I lassoed off the entire California Nebula, including that surrounding gas, sort of following the shape of it as, I, as it appeared on my computer screen. And then I sort of put, when, as usual, camera raw filter in Photoshop and just sort of played with it. I didn't touch too much the texture and all that. I'm just trying to sort of bring it out, give it a nice color, make it pop off the background. Then I selected inverse. So now we're working on only the background. I did my gradient exterminator just to sort of fix any um, light pollution or um, sky gradient. And I do find that's always the best way to do it. Um, isolate the target itself and then just work on the background and then let it sort it out just working on the background. I find that almost always works better. Then I play with contrast, luminance, just to sort of darken and soften that background, make sure I was happy with it. At the same time, making sure it looked natural and that I wasn't super obvious that I was working on individual parts of the image. So once I was happy with that, I clicked off the image. And so I worked on the California with its surrounding gas. I worked on the background. Then I worked on the main structure of the California Nebula itself. So now we're, now we're going for uh, texture depth. Um, I really, as I mentioned, I really wanted to make this a vivid sort of uh, striking image, you could say. So I wanted there to be depth in it. I wanted to really see the ridges of the gas flowing up and out and not as soft as my first image. So that was the goal. So again, camera filter playing with texture clarity um, vibrance, uh, whites, and just trying to make some of those ridges really pop, trying to make depth, some dark spots, some light spots, just a lot to look at. So it really pops off the back. That's what I was trying to get. So that's how I did that. And at the same time, now that you're isolating just the main structure, that gas or that surrounding gas is sort of staying more soft. And the nice thing too, is that once you've done that, um, processing of the main structure again now you can select inverse and say that you don't really like the way that gas surrounding gas looks it's still too bright you can sort of play with contrast right increase contrast a bit and it'll start to darken as well as your background so 
Even after working on the main structure, I still went back to the background, selecting inverse, and tried to make that how I liked it. That's what I spent most of my time on this image doing, is just trying to get that gas to look right. Um, and, and you know, just, just enough to see it there and to add to the image, but not be like the main focal point where, wow, look at all this gas that's, and you're not even looking at the structure of the California Nebula itself. So that's basically everything. Otherwise, it's pretty standard, guys. I think it's a, a fairly easy image uh, target. I think, as, as I mentioned, as long as you're using, I would still recommend a modified DSLR or a DSLR with a, a, a good light pollution filter, because if you don't have either of those, you may struggle a little bit to pull out the details of it. But if, if you're using anything like that, never mind a dedicated astrophotography camera, you should be, be pretty blown away by how quickly it pops in processing and then you know it's up to you how far you want to go after that so that's it pretty much for my video guys I'm, I'm looking forward now to showing you the final image before I do though I just want to say a couple things first of all I hit 2,000 followers on Instagram thank you so much I really appreciate it guys if, if you're not following already it's at keys to the cosmos all one word and I'm coming up on 500 uh, subscribers here on YouTube I'm a little bit away ways away but if you haven't subscribed, guys, please do. I appreciate the support and I'll have a lot more to come. And with given that, those two sort of milestones coming up, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So uh, that's where you're following my Instagram will be key. I want to sort of do a, a small equipment a giveaway, nothing crazy, obviously. But, um, you know, especially if you're just starting out, you may appreciate that and you're going to want to enter. And I got to give away some of these prints. I've had them for a while now. Time to make room for some new ones so i'll be giving away my eagle nebula probably the elephant trunk and a couple more so stay tuned for that so again at keys of the cosmos if you're not already following thanks again guys i really appreciate your support here's my latest version of the california nebula take care